Ladies, for the last few weeks, we've been talking about you. Today, men, it's our turn. And I don't need a partner, although I, I kind of do need a sidekick. But you know, today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, improving our home. Now, I know most of you think, Pastor Ron, you've never worn one of those. <laughs> and you're probably right. If you ever work with me, you know my tools are everywhere, all over anything, and they're certainly not in the bag next to me. But we're going to talk a little bit about what it means to improve your home. What does it mean for us to be the kings of our castle? Men, are you the king of your castle? Amen. We have one. The rest of you are queens. Okay. <laughs> we got a lot of work to do. We are looking at this idea of king of the castle. We think in our minds we got everything under control. And if we don't, man, we got a power tool that will fix that. We've got it all figured out. Matter of fact, we think it's all about being a king. In reality, it's about much, much more than that. And in this series, we're going to talk about how it really takes being a prophet, a priest, and a benevolent king. And we get this idea from the, the command that we have as men to love our families as Christ loved the church. And Christ was the ultimate prophet, priest, and king. Now, when you say, when, I want you to think about this. When I say, hey, listen, I want to help you with, to have the house of your dreams, the home life of your dreams, what, what am I meaning by that? I, because a lot of you guys are like, listen, I can't even imagine what that looks like. Well, let me tell you what I'm talking about. When we finish this series, I want you to understand that we're looking for a family full of love, joy, peace, respect, fulfillment, significance, a home that we can be proud of when we stand before Christ and give an account. This is the kind of home I'm talking about. This is what we're going to talk about over the next five weeks. Now, I'm sure some of you in your mind are thinking, actually, there's a third of you are thinking, yeah, I already have that. And I think it's awesome. Now, I'm not, I just made that number up because I know that's not the case. I think another you, a third of you are thinking, that's the craziest idea of all times. We, we, we can't really fix our homes. I mean, the world is so against us. And another I thinking, that's absolutely ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. But I want you to know that as we talk about this, we're going to be talking about the tools necessary for men of the house, the men of the house, to actually, actually have a major impact on what it looks like to improve our homes. Improving our homes is important. Man, do you remember, maybe you don't, I do. Do you remember there, when you started to think about marriage? I mean, let's just face it, you were pondering up in your mind what marriage would be like. And once you got past sex, you kind of thought about some other things. Like, hey, I'm so excited because I get all these wonderful things, sex. I'm going I'm to have a wife who loves me and does everything that I need. She's going to care for every need that I have, right? I mean, you're going to have a place where you're the man. Man cave. What a, you see that we now have a man cave? I thought the house was the man cave. Now we got a little closet, you know, downstairs in the basement. That's our man cave. Man, how about this? You're going to have children that are going to fulfill all your dreams and desires, everything that you failed at, they're going to be better at. You know, you thought you were going to be a great athlete. You want them to be a better athlete. I mean, you thought you were okay at business. They're going to be better at business. Not only that, you can't wait to have kids because you want to stop mowing the lawn, taking out the trash. I mean, kids are the ultimate opportunity for you to be served. I mean, this is, this is what you want, right? I don't know, that's kind of how I feel anyway. When I was thinking about my own life and where I was at, marriage, it sounded so great. And then, and then I got married. And I, I quickly realized everybody wasn't on my page. Like we, we, there were people that had different ideas. Of, I know that's hard to believe, but there was different ideas. and. And all of a sudden, I found myself struggling with how do I, you know, how, what do you do with these little babies? Like until they can mow the lawn. 
I, I, you know? Hmm. Listen, man, we're going to spend some time in the garage. And we're going to find ourselves looking at some tools that we can use to help us make a difference in our family's life. Ways in which we can create things, build things in our home that will make a difference. I mean, these tools, by the way, are not for you to lend out like me. We don't lend these tools out. No, these tools are specifically for you. You as men, these tools we must use, we cannot lend them out. What's our goal? Our goal is to create a marriage and a family that lasts the test of time. We're living in a culture where time lasting marriages just don't make it any longer. We were talking with Phil about his marriage and his life with Chris and how wonderful it was. And it was 43 years of marriage that they were together. And I thought, you know, there's not many marriages that make it 43 years. There's many marriages in this church that are in 50 years and more, 60 years. That is awesome. That doesn't happen anywhere anymore. And I'm going to talk today about how to make that happen. How marriages can endure the trials of life and how marriage will, marriages can produce God-fearing children and life-changing community. Listen, we want to be learning how to change the world by being a city on a hill. And it starts with our families, men. And it's our responsibility to do it. All the while enjoying what? Love, joy, peace, and respect, significance, fulfillment, all the things that you want to have. So let's just take a minute again. We're going to be talking about prophet, priest, and king. And I don't know if you're hearing that back feedback, but I am. We're going to talk about prophet, priest, and king, but we're going to really spend the next few Sundays talking about prophet or the priest, a benevolent priest. Now, when we think of a benevolent priest and what it means to build our home and home improvement, uh, our king, when we think about king, when you think about what it takes for you to be a king of your castle, there's three things that you need to know. A, a good king provides security. Okay, he's the provider of the home. This is what he does. He's all about providing. And thirdly, he's all about leadership. And today we're going to talk about what it means for you to be a protector, one who provides security. Are you doing what is necessary to provide your home? Now, every man in the house says, yes, I have an arsenal in my home. Right? If I said, hey, can you protect your home? You're like, oh, yeah, absolutely. If you're like me, you're like, uh, yeah, I've got my Glock, but I don't like Glocks, but I'm a Springfield guy, so I've got my Springfield 40 next to me. Oh, not only that, I bought my wife a Benelli M4 shotgun. She needs protection. She said, you didn't buy that for me. You bought that for you. Yes, I did. Semi-automatic. <laughs> Shoots quite rapidly. Oh, I have a mini AR-15 pistol. Nine millimeter, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We are gonna make sure we take care of the world. We're gonna protect everyone. And if I have any other concern, I have a SAIT 308 that will take care of the rest. Right, man, that's what we think. We think in our minds, it's all about protection of our families in this way, but our weapons really aren't what I'm talking about today. Weapons really aren't gonna be what I'm talking about when I say we're gonna protect our family. That's not the case. Matter of fact, because we have Second Amendment rights, we know this. This is a great honor to be in America because many people in many countries don't have these things. And if we're not careful, just so you know, men, we're going to lose these rights because of foolishness. I just want you to know right now, my heart was not only broken for Chris Swires and her family, but my heart was broken this week as we talked to him and saw this incredible, heinous, evil thing that happened in Texas in this school. I don't know about you, but my blood boils when it comes to what this world is coming to, where we see innocence broken. But let me tell you something, and I'll tell you, and I'll tell you, and I'll tell you, because I have to tell you, guns don't kill people. People who do not fear God kill people. This is the bottom line. If we want to change 
If we want to change our culture, we have to change the mindset of our people that there is a God and that God is on the throne, amen? amen. What would it look like if we woke up in, in uh, not in Juneau, in Washington and said, you know what? Let's start talking about Second Amendments. Let's put God back in the schools and preach it and teach it as the truth that it is. Can you imagine that? If every school tomorrow said, hey, listen, we were wrong. There is a God. And he has some commandments we should follow. And one of them is we shall not murder. One of them is that life is precious. And we teach, instead of evolutionary garbage that says you're an animal, that you're actually a child of the king. Wow, what a transformation that would be. Church, we have got to understand this. We've got to understand this battle. And I'm getting off on a rant, but I want you to know Psalms 14.1 says this, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Those who say there is no God, they are corrupt. They do abominable deeds and there is no one good. Why do people kill innocent people and do evil things? Because they're evil people. And the world is evil without God. So church, church, I'm not talking about men that protect their family with guns. Oh no, I'm talking about something much greater than that. Guns are not the answer. No, protecting the minds and the hearts and the emotions of our family, men, this is what I'm talking about. If you want to improve your home, you will impact the mind and the heart and the emotions of those under your roof. You will not neglect them. You will pay attention to them. You will transform your life around them because if you truly want to protect your family, you will do so. Men, you are responsible to do your part to protect the mind of everyone in your ham family, from the philosophies of the world to the lies of the world, from the deception of the world. Do you understand this? When we talk about home improvement, I can improve your home tomorrow if you would just understand that this is now your responsibility and always has been. Colossians says this in chapter 2 and verse 8, see to it that no one takes you captive by philosophies and empty deceit, according to the human traditions, according to the eternal elements of the world, and not according to Christ. Men, our job is to battle and protect the mind. Men, how can we sit back and allow godless teachers, godless information to impact our wives and our children and ourselves with philosophies that are completely contrary to the scripture and wonder why we don't have the home of our dreams. Don't be a fool. Don't be a fool and don't be fooled. There is no separation from what you allow in to the tendency of your mind to go to it. This is what we find. This is what we know when we start watching garbage, we produce garbage. When we start hanging around garbage, we start acting like garbage. Jesus made a very interesting statement as he was talking to his Pharisees, the Pharisees about why they wouldn't believe. And Jesus is, is a little frustrated and he's recognizing this in John chapter eight and verse 43, he, he just flat out comes out and says it. And this is what I want every Christian to understand, every Christian man to understand. Those who teach your children, your family, yourself matter because they are on the wrong side. Notice this, chapter 8 and verse 43, it says this, why do you not understand what I say? This is Jesus speaking to the Pharisees. He's like, why don't you get it? Why don't you understand? And then he answers his own question. It is because you cannot bear to hear my words. Listen, the world doesn't want to hear your gospel story. Listen, if the person you're listening to and getting advice from and allowing into your home is not embracing the word of God and the truth found in God's word, I can, I can tell you this, there's trouble coming. Verse 44 says this, you are of your father, the devil. Wow. And yours will be, it is to do, your desire is to do the will of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his character, for he is a liar and the father 
of lies. Wow. Wow. Do you understand something? Men in the house today, everything that comes into your home that teaches you and your children that is opposite of what God says is actually listening to, if not Satan himself, impacting the direction of where your house is going. And then you wonder why your home is not growing. Listen, don't allow those who follow the father of lies creep into your homes and steal your security, the security that you have. The mind is a precious thing. It's so important, men, that we understand this idea because men are so about tools and so about work and so about the physical, they forget the mental. Men, your job is to protect the mind. Romans chapter 12 and verse one says this, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that by testing you, you may discern what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable and perfect. This is not, listen, 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 this is not a one-time purchase of a handgun or a baseball bat to protect your family. That's an easy cop-out. No, this idea, this fight, this home improvement workout is going to require you and me to consider the home, the mental state of our home. So here's our question. What are we letting in? What are we letting into our homes? What are we allowing our kids to see. Now, before we get there, I want to just stop for a moment, men. Before we're so critical of our wives and our teenagers and our young kids, I want to ask you the question. What are you allowing in to your life? Because if we want to be men of God who improve our homes, it must start with us. It's not our wife's fault. It's not our kid's fault. It's not the culture's fault. It's our fault, our job, men. It's to start with us. What are we watching? What information are we reading? What are we listening to? What video games are we participating in? What is it that we do? What philosophies are we engaging in that is contrary to the truth of God's word? Hmm, are you protecting your world word? your mind from the lies of the world? Hmm, it starts with us. It starts with us. Hmm, I want you to think about this. A king's subjects will only do what the king says while the king is watching. Listen to me again. A king's subjects will only do what the king says while the king is watching. But they will do what the king does while he's not. Man, we want to improve our homes. We want to see our kids and our families thrive in this culture. We must be those who protect. We must decide that we are willing to protect at all costs. The minds of our families, the minds of ourselves. But not only that, what are we allowing? Better yet, who are we allowing? Who are we allowing to impact our families? Who is it that your kids idolize? Who is it that you idolize? Do you idolize athletes that are not Christians who live like the devil, but we think they're great at being an athlete? I just want you to know something. One of the things that I do about sports is I like to look at the character of the athlete. I like to look at the actor. There's some movies I just can't even watch anymore because of the garbage philosophies that the actors possess. It'd been better for them to shut their mouths, right, and just act. Athletes, the same story, but no, they've opened their mouth and they just isolated a bunch of us. We're looking for godly men, godly role models. Is that what you have in your home? Is that what you understand? Who are it? Who is it that you're allowing into your house? What characters are you allowing your kids to follow? One of the things I love is our program called Right Now Media. For all parents in the room today, if you don't know about it, you can go to our website and download right now media, so you can have good Christian content for your kids. Because it matters, it matters all the time. Not only do we need to protect the mind, but the second thing we need to do is protect our family's heart. Protect our family's heart. Men, men in the house today, man, the heart, 
What does the Bible say about the heart? Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things, desperately sick. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, searches the heart and the mind. I love this, heart and the mind right there in it. To give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. Man, man, our job is to protect our families from the deceitfulness of the heart. The heart, when we talk about that, is the human condition. It's called sinfulness. Our role as king is to guard our own hearts and guard the hearts of our families. So many men are finding themselves struggling to keep their families together because they have lost their families' hearts. But you're the dictator of where your family goes. You're the dictator of the heart of the family. You are the one who drives what is true and what is right. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 says this, Keep your heart with all vigilance. For from it flows the springs of life. From it flows the springs of life. When we think, men, about what it looks like for us to improve our homes, the tools necessary, we got to ask ourselves the question about the heart. But the heart, just so you know, the way you protect it is you first start with your speech. Notice how the verse goes on in Proverbs, the verse 24, put away from you crooked speech and devious talk far from you. The way we guard our heart is we guard our mouths. Now, I don't know about you, the tools my parents used to help me guard my mouth, I would probably be thrown in, they would be thrown in jail for. Because it was a bar of soap, it was duct tape. Oh, the liquid soap, man, when that came out, that's the worst stuff of all time. And I deserved every bit of it. And by the way, I didn't die. And my mind is still clear most of the time. And occasionally, I even got this thing, they, I don't know what my dad called it. It was kind of like the spoon to the head, you know, like that, yes, snap my head. Got my attention, which was, shut your mouth, Ronnie. I know you never hear that, but that's what I was called as a kid. Shut your mouth, watch your mouth. We, we have all these tools to help our children in our own minds because of the culture we live in now, nobody even wants to say anything. I was in the store the other day and I'm listening to a kid talk and I'm thinking, that kid's still breathing. How's that possible? I would not be breathing if I spoke like that to my parent. I, 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 I do not know who thought that it was good to not use the tools necessary, but for whatever reason, our culture has decided that that's not important. But man, I want to talk to you about your mouth, not your kid's mouth. I want to talk about yours. What's coming out of your mouth? What do you have to do to clean your language up, to encourage others? What is it going to do? What are you going to have to do to change the way you talk in your home? Because the heart is driven by the words you say. When you use bad words, it drives the heart of your family away from you, not to you. Man, what are you using? What words are you using? I heard of a story of a guy who had a foul mouth and he just, he wanted to figure it out. And he says, well, you know, one of the things that really motivate me is money. And so he, uh, he put a jar in the kitchen and every time he would say something inappropriate, his kids would say, pay up. And he had to put $5 in the buck. I don't care what you got to do in, in the jar, whatever you got to do to keep your mouth from getting out of control, I would encourage you men to do it. If it means paying, finding yourself, whatever it looks like, do whatever it takes. Listen, what are these tools that we need? We need to understand that our mouth matters. To protect our family's heart, the second thing we have to understand is that the heart of our families and the heart of ourselves is determined by direction. Notice how the passage continues in 25 through 27. Let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. Ponder the path of your feet. Then all your ways will be sure. Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Turn your foot away from evil. How do we guide the heart of our families? We find ourselves looking forward towards the mark, the high calling of Jesus Christ. 
This is the direction we go. We can immediately improve our family by protecting our, the hearts and lives of our children, our wives, and ourselves. So here's my question to you. Where is your heart? Is your heart on the things of God? Is your mouth, is your heart, is your actions on the things of God? You want to improve your heart, your, your home, but you don't want to actually engage in what it looks like to set your heart on God? Well, first of all, I want you to know right now, I'm speaking to all you who do, because I feel like, man, it's 75 degrees outside, I'm cooking hot up here. I'm sure I'd like to be shorts, drinking a sweet tea on my deck right now. So I thank you for being here. But the reality is this, many times in life, we allow our hearts to distract us, to take us places we don't wanna be. We think in our minds we do, but we don't. Whether it's a hobby, whether it, whatever you might call it that might distract your home. I want you to understand the heart matters. And lastly, not only is the heart the issue, not only is the mind important men, but the emotions are important. Our job is to protect our family's emotions. Mental health is becoming an incredible conversation of today. It's amazing to me how our mental health is so weak. We have weak minds. We are becoming weak people. And it's because we have weak men. Amen. Weak men. Men, we are to be strong emotionally, not weak, strong. The first thing we do with emotional weakness when we find ourselves teaching and training mental strength is this, number one, Learn how to guide your family through anxiety and worry. There should be none. You should be the rock that teaches your kids and your wife. We don't worry about those things. God's in control. We don't find ourselves struggling here. Notice the passage, Philippians 4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, prayer and supplication. And thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will hmm, guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Interesting. Finally, brothers, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honorable, whatever is just and pure, lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on these things, men. We want to have mental strength. We want to deal with, uh, with, with mental health. Oh, my word. Let's be men of examples when it comes to how we worry and what we let anxiety be about. Not only that, men, it's not just about mental health when it comes to anxiety. We got to control our tempers. We have become a society where men are just angry. They're mad at everything. Why? because their houses are chaos. And I don't just mean you as a home, I'm talking about you as a person. Your house, your life is chaos. You live in anger all the time. But God says, listen, do not be angry. Do not be angry. Man, I want you to know something about anger. Anger is not a reaction from somebody, something someone else does. Are you hearing me? Anger is not a reaction based on what someone else does. Anger is what's coming out of you. You are angry. When someone does something, it comes out of you. You say, that's not true. Well, I just want you to know, how was Jesus able to say, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Do you think there was angry, anger in sight of him? Or do you think he had self-control? I think that he had self-control. See, he did not allow anger to bother him. Proverbs 14, 16 says this, a wise person is cautious and turns from evil, but a fool is easily angered and careless. A quick-tempered person acts foolishly. One who schemes is hated. Listen, to protect our children, men, we need to learn how to not get angry. And listen to me, really, parents, dads, that means when your kids get angry, your job is to control the anger. 
When you see your kid flailing and flopping and doing a tantrum and you just go, yeah, whatever, just so you know, they just get worse and worse and worse. Your job is to say, we don't live angry. We live under self-control. Mental health starts with the idea of worry and stress and how we handle our emotions like anger. Hmm. The last one is this for mental health. How do we do it? Simply choose to trust God. Now, my wife's like, Ron, that is such a Jesus answer. And guess what? Yes, it is. Mental health. Men, how do you protect your home? Demonstrate that you trust God. Because the moment you don't, your children think your faith is a joke, is a lie. We are called to trust God. Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lead into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will bring healing to your flesh, flesh and refreshment to your bones. Now listen, I'm sure you're ready to go. You're like, get me out of here. I can't take any more. And that's good. I hope you do. You're probably thinking, well, right now, that's impossible. Pastor Ron, do you realize we live in 2022? Like, we live in a completely different world than you're talking. The Bible was written 2,000 years ago, and that was much easier to do, and that's just not possible. I'm here to say that's a lie from Satan. That's a conscious decision that you're making to not be in the fight, to not be in the battle of protection. Again, it's not a gun. It's not that your household is a fortress. No, we're talking about the mind, the heart, and the emotions. And I'm going to tell you the first tool that you need. It's a trash can and a broom and a dustpan. Because the truth is this, for us to protect our home, we got to start cleaning the garbage out of it. We don't need to add one more Bible study, one more moment of silence. Ain't going to help you any. When you got the garbage still all over the living room. Now, if you've been to my garage, which most of you have not, but there are some that have been blessed with that opportunity. (laughs) Jay Walker's over here just laughing. My garage is a disaster. Matter of fact, I probably don't know where half the stuff is in it, so that's why I go to the store and buy more. (laughs) But I want you to know something. Many of us men, our homes are the same way. They're disasters because you're unwilling to take the time to clean up. So yesterday, I took the day and I cleaned my garage. It was amazing. I can get my car in there. But the problem with cleaning is there's no glory in it. There's no glory in it. I mean, the truth is this. Yeah, it looks really sharp, but there's no fun. There's no power tools. There's no coolness. It's just dirty work. That's why I respect women so much for cleaning up after you. There's no glory in it. But I want you to know something. If you want to improve your home, we've got to start using the tools necessary to make a difference. When it comes to protection, it starts with a broom on a trash can in a dustpan. It takes the hard work of cleaning the mess up that we've made out of our lives, the content we've put inside of it. Men, we can make a difference. We can do what's right. We can improve our homes instantly in this culture and in this moment. Men, I want to tell you a little secret. You're men. I, I'm not, I just didn't want to take that for granted. You're men. You are the leaders of your home. The world will tell you that's not true, but I'm telling you it is true, and you are going to stand before God and give an account 
for being the leader of your home, the benevolent king. You will stand there before him and you will make excuses for why the culture told you that wasn't your job when it was. And so listen to me, it's gonna be hard when you tell your kid, listen, you're not watching that anymore. We're not playing that anymore. We're not doing that anymore. I don't wanna see that anymore because I'm gonna change my own heart in my own life. Not because I'm getting on your case, but because I myself am gonna be transformed by the word of God. Men. Men, as we close today, every man in the house today thinks in their minds, I love that leadership stuff, I love being the man, but I wanna read a verse to you that I think changes the way we think about life. We cannot, listen to me, men, we cannot forget this verse. 1 Corinthians 11.3. Memorize it, know it, and learn the first half and ignore the second half. Because you'll lean the second half and you'll ignore the first half. It says this, but I want you to understand that Christ is the head of every man. Men, do you hear me? Christ is the head of every man. If you want to be the king of your castle and have your wife follow you and your kids submit to you and all that wonderful stuff, know this. It starts here. Christ is the head of every man. Therefore, what's in this book is your rule book and how you live your life. Because everybody wants to spend their time in the second part and say, oh yes, but the man is the head of the woman. It doesn't work, guys. That second part doesn't work if you don't realize the first, which is Christ is the head of every man and God is the head of Christ. So today, I wanna challenge you. I wanna ask you, men of the house today, are you willing to consider that you can improve your home today? It requires us to have the fear of the Lord and to understand that Christ is our King and we answer to him. We don't answer to our wives. We don't answer to our children. We don't answer to the government. We answer to God Almighty. And man, I just wanna challenge you. I wanna implore you. I wanna encourage you. I wanna ask you to thrive in this because I know this, we can change our world and our homes if we would just understand what it takes to be a benevolent king who protects our family. Hey everybody, Pastor Ron here. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Here at ABT, we make a big deal about following Jesus. Make sure that you subscribe and hit our notification bell so that you don't miss any of our upcoming video content. Also, if you'd like to support this ministry, please click donate now. Thanks for watching.